it was time for some more EU4 action, this time playing as Burgundy, and for charity. The goal, if our chat can raise $1,444 for charity, specifically for the Save the Children charity, I will go bald. Live on stream, and on this YouTube video. The last time we played Burgundy, I formed the Netherlands. You do lose land if you go that route, but you can still scale to be a very strong nation. This time, I wanted to do something different for you old time viewers and instead wanted to go down the path of Lothar's legacy, essentially forming Lotharingia. We are using a mod that makes this matchup a lot more balanced than in vanilla. The way it works is that since the France region has a bunch of extra provinces, plus the reworked trade nodes in France, means that France in the early game is a lot stronger. Burgundy, on the other hand, starts with a better ruler, Flanders starts immediately integrated, and both Holland and Brabant are vassals instead of PUs. With the potential to get about 50% in the English Channel, Burgundy scales much harder than France if left untouched. Burgundy also has a unique age bonus in the mod, as well as Merc's near manpower from their ideas. And Merc manpower might seem useless, but in a mod where Merc manpower is heavily nerfed, Merc manpower is actually very, very important in these early game wars. So the way this matchup works is that if France decks pre about 1460, they have the advantage. But if France or Burgundy decks post 1460, Burgundy has the advantage. We used our mission tree to start getting claims and we began conquering an English channel immediately and got really blessed RNG by firing radical reforms almost immediately. Something that rarely happens. Oh my god. Oh Jesus. Okay, okay. That's radical reforms already th done. Oh lord, that's actually really good. Okay, now we just need the splendor bonus guy. Boom, boom, boom. Diplo annexation cost. And that's even more diplo annexation cost. And just like that, we're gaming, actually. Uh, gonna decrease autonomy on all these provinces. We're gonna get two, two vassals. And then I'm gonna also vassalize Gilray. So we have the three vassals. So we keep that for our splendor bonus. Because right now, yeah, like, you know, we're trying to get as much splendor as possible. Early game splendor is so important in these early game wars. Burgundy was prospering. Surely this France player doesn't know that he needs to attack me early in order to win this matchup. And we would scale endlessly, becoming the number one GP and outmatching everyone. Are you sure about that? Literally, there it is. I don't think we can actually win this. I'm going to try to defend though. Um, it, it, like, it's gonna be so hard to win. Defender of the Faith. Is it still tech 4? Okay, uh... Alright, go. 5th of May. To be good. Doing pretty good. Oh no. Oh no. 100k troops. Jesus Christ, dude. With France committing over 100k, I needed to do the same. Basically initiating a sweat fest between me and the France player. Two equally skilled players destroying their nations in the beginning of the game just for a couple provinces. Ah, the beauty of EU4 MP. Uh oh. No! I greeted too hard. I greeted on reinforcements too hard. Fatal mistake. It's always better to over reinforce than under reinforce. With the amount of money we were losing monthly, decisive victory was needed. And now that France also had Tech 5, it seemed very unlikely. <sighs> okay, we're winning this battle. We're winning the battle. There we won. We won the battle. We won the battle. We finally were able to go on the offensive. A victory on this fort and then a victory on Paris would most likely ensure an unconditional surrender.
Ui. Bankruptcy was looming, and defeat was near. I had one more battle in me before bankruptcy, and I took it because I wanted to hurt Francis Eco as much as possible. If I could make him bankrupt, this wouldn't be as bad as the situation, even if we lose 100%. things considered, the peace deals from England and France weren't the worst. Our Burgundian lands were in the hands of the stinky French. Our economy was poop and we had rampant corruption. The old Habibi would have given up. Yo, what's up guys? It's me, Absolute Papega, and here I am ganking more players because I think I am good and have egotistical problems. What is up? And surprisingly, my Twitch chat was actually cheering me on. And even though we lost, I was having a lot of fun. And that is the main reason why we play in the end of the day. This wasn't old Habibi. This was new and improved Habibi. And we were going to stay until we were in spectator mode. Economic golden age? Check. Time to scale. We were behind in ideas and technology. I kept up in Miltech, but I was two to three ideas behind to France. Luckily for us, he still had about 11K in debt. At this point, I was not rooting corruption to the max so I could have a positive balance. That way I can spend money on churches as well as trade centers. Yes, churches were actually very important for me to get at this point because there are a lot of provinces in uh, the lowlands that have high tax just naturally, as well as the estate privilege that we can give to the clergy that is giving us three papal points every church we build, which we can use to get uh, bonuses and even become the Pope. We were alone in fighting France though. We could not get any allies that were willing to fight France and I didn't want to call anyone in anyways as it would be much better if we fought him alone. Fortunately, while this was happening, Spain bankrupted while fighting Morocco and France got a free 100% war on Spain. We were able to get the morale event from Advisor and right when that happened, France declared war. We built mercenaries and rolled for discipline events, which I somehow immediately got. Oh, ho, ho. Let's go! Let's go again! France had Ilan and a lot of cannons. By the time we took our first engagement, France had already occupied one-third of my country. I was winning the battles, but I was burning through a lot of money. So was France though, but not on the same level. And even though I knew I couldn't last forever, it felt good winning battles against a France who had 300 to 400 more dev than us, especially after losing the first war. In order to win this war, I needed to not lose a single battle. But unfortunately, our win streak ended in Salins, where we lost to the superior French forces. Bankrupted a second time, 
and once again unconditionally surrendered to France. Well, it was a nice run. I mean, we made this guy take like 6k more debt, but yeah, like uh, after the first war. England declared war on us while we were bankrupt. However, we did get saved by Hess, who'd rather us be alive than a stronger England, who was basically just scaling this entire time me and France were fighting. So thanks to him, we were able to secure a white peace. Then Milan and Venice declared war on France, and he bankrupted after only taking a couple battles. And as soon as we were out of bankruptcy, we truce broke France. And in just one peace deal, we got back all of our land. And to make it even spicier, as soon as France got out of his bankruptcy, he didn't attack Milan. No, he attacked me, which was great. Because now I was the stronger nation. I did have a scuffed economy because I gave monopoly to textiles to survive in the last war. I know it was a huge mistake, but still beat up the French. Only 13 loans from that war. Only 13 loans. Oh my god. The succession crisis. We had the succession crisis. We could have kept Marie, but uh, she was garbage. Sickest comeback of all time. <laughs> yeah, England has big mercantilism. Also, he has five level five trade centers. He went trade first. It's almost time for Lothar's legacy. Would you be interested in a trade agreement with England? We were finally getting rid of our corruption that we've had for so many years at this point. And um, simultaneously, we also were able to revoke the monopoly on textiles, which was literally removing 10 ducats of our income. It was a big mistake. I did it in the end of the second French war. I just needed any money so I could keep going because I was winning battle after battle. Ended up biting me in the ass. Shall take up Lothar's mantle? Yes, please! Lothar again has form! 20, IC 20 manpower, 10 ICA, 15 goods produced, 15% mercenary manpower, minus one prestige decay, 15 morale of armies, five discipline, 10 trade efficiency, minus 10 idea cost, yearly advisor, possible advisors, core creation costs. Really good ideas, dude. Really good ideas. They're like a buffed version of Burgundy ideas, dude. $50 for the kids. For the kids? <laughs> I'm gonna be bald. I'm gonna be bald. Is the shaving? Yeah, as soon as we reach it, I'm gonna call in one of my sisters and she's gonna shave my head here. We'll put a trash bag right here and she's gonna buzz it here and then we're gonna have to shave it after. Oh my lord, dude. It's, I'm actually so scared. Of course, it's only proper that we go the kids build, aka quality or quantity influence, which gives you the super vassals. Kind of like what we did in our Prussia game. Lotharingi is colonizing now. Dude, we actually reached 1,526. 1,526, dude. On our goal. Absolutely freaking insane, dude. Absolutely insane. And here we are. I'm putting trash. A trash bag under my chair. So we can cut my hair while I'm playing this game. Is stream already over? No, stream is not already over. We we still have... It's hour 7 of a 24-hour stream. There's still a long way to go, chat. But before I could cut my hair, an opportunity arose. 
Great Britain had declared war on Sweden and had put 150,000 troops in Sweden. The thing is, alone Sweden could not win, and alone I can't beat Great Britain. But if both of us build a lot of galleys and heavies, we could potentially win one naval engagement, and that's all it would take in order to stack wipe GB's entire army. The children build, look! They're swarming! Look how many troops Brittany has! Look how many troops Brittany has! <laughs> the children built! How many galleys? How many galleys do you have? You ready? We are, you ready? Let's go, let's go, let's go. I think it's fleet. Go, 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 go. We got the heavies in, we got the heavies in. Nice, we're winning navally. He's bringing a bunch of trade boats. We can win, we can kill all of them. We can delete all of them. Get, get more galleys, get, get more galleys. Yes, yeah, we're, we're deleting all of them. We're deleting all of them. Better building. Nice, nice. Heal, heal, heal boats, heal boats, heal boats. I need to save my bro. I need to get on the war goal. Yeah, yeah, we are gonna trap him. He's going to feel the wrath of Lotharingia. I'm gonna build more heavies. I'm gonna build more heavies. I'm bankrupt. You're bankrupt? Yeah. Wait, why did he do that? Why did you do that? Since. GB was sending stab hits to Sweden and Sweden was not accepting them he was getting minus stability and since half his nation was occupied and he had a lot of loans his loan cap decreased because when your stability decreases your interest per num goes up and your loan cap goes down so he insta bankrupted off of a stab hit and because of that he auto accepted the last stab hit sent by GB this truce break was totally not necessary but I was a little frustrated because we were just like moments away from stack wiping 200k British troops. This war was pretty boring since I could never go on the mainland, but I was able to occupy British European land and I got a stab hit on England. But England was angry and not only was he angry, he was lucky and he fired army reform giving him 20% morale and he truce broke us. Milan helped in the initial engagements, I'm not really sure why, but with Golden Era Two events and a popped mission, GB had 6.5 morale to my 4.6. My golden era had just ended. Popped every single mission, bro, and golden era. I don't have golden era. It's doable. It's doable. It just I'm just going to be weak forever. It's just annoying. There's no opportunity in this game, which is fine. I had to commit so many more numbers than GB just because of the big morale difference. But finally, I was able to push them off. We once again met in Normandy, and they defeated us. When we tried to siege back our land and assault the fort, GB's army was ready to engage. I had to cut off to stop it before we reinforced with the rest. GB was stab hitting us this entire time and just like Sweden I bankrupted off of a stab hit. Luckily for us though he didn't get 100% and we auto accepted his stab hit. What a weird war. Milan also took the opportunity to take advantage of our bankrupt state and took part of France from us. Not the strongest Lotharingia. Now it was time to go bald.
bald and bankrupt. <laughs> I look like a carpet salesman. What does that even mean, dude? It's completed. <laughs> and now it's a bald, 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 Recoverable. Recoverable. We can do this. Bro, I want to take a shower. Oh. I need to shower so fast, though. People always doubt me, you know. People always doubt the Habibsters. They always doubt the Habibsters. Surely no one will attack me while I'm in the shower. What the frick? I was showering! I didn't even get to put on my clothes, dude! The swarm! We are the swarm! Oh, I'm actually losing this one. How? We find ourselves in another war against another power who's stronger than us. This time, the Swiss are helping, but they're barely committing, barely building over 70,000 troops. I didn't notice it, but Milan had Tech 14 advantage on us, both me and Switzerland, meaning his troops were trading just a bit better, and many of the first engagements went for Milan. It wasn't until I was able to bait Milan onto a very bad battle, one where he was taking a minus two, that I began to actually start winning. However, Milan was able to push us back as soon as we started sieging his forts. And so began a back and forth between us and Milan. And Milan just ended up stab hitting for money, which was a little bit weird, but it made a lot of sense when a couple seconds later, he truce broke us. Bringing naked and he decked again. Westphalia has got me this time though. If you can, just I have no troops. troops. Guys, it's a tech difference. It's a tech difference, chat. Milan then bankrupted a couple of battles later, which made me realize that Milan was on the verge of bankruptcy near the end of the war, which is why he stab headed the first time. And I'm guessing he truce broke to basically make me bankrupt so I don't truce break him here but I ended up just truce breaking him here after uh, he went bankrupt I'm actually in agony right now like this is the definition of suffering but like I'm fine I'm fine the baldness helps before I could reach 95% to Sicily's allied Milan and threaten to join if I didn't white piece or stab hit so I ended up sending a stab hit peace deal to Milan. So many freaking stab hits in this game, man. Once again, I had a pretty considerable amount of debt here. I was kind of fine. Um, our buildings were very, very minimal, and we were not even a GP. At least we were alive. And as soon as our Milan truce was up, guess who declared war on us? It, it was Milan once again. This time with Tech 15 before I have Tech 15. Milan's tech cost build really coming in the clutch in these two last wars. Milan pushed us all the way to the lowlands, cornering us and occupying a majority of my nation. With tech 15, he was able to push us all the way to Holland, and it even looked like he was about to start stack wiping stuff. But Milan simply did not have enough troops. We rolled discipline once again, and we were able to take the tech. We were even able to push Milan all the way back to Italy after two successful battles. At that point, I was running out of juice. I still had loans from the last war. 
But I also noticed that Milan also took 12 corruption. So that meant that he also was really close to bankruptcy. Our final battles were so close, so, so, so close. We had our last battle in the center of France, reminiscent of our wars against the French in the early stages of this campaign. And after our bankruptcy, we unconditionally surrendered once again. And honestly, this was an insane roller coaster of a campaign, and I thoroughly enjoyed it and wouldn't have had it any other way. We did get off this nation and then we went and played the Ottomans since the Ottomans player went to go to sleep um, and this nation was pretty much dead, not really much expansion left for it. Um, and uh, actually, uh, there's more to this campaign. I'm just playing someone else, playing as the Ottomans, which you're going to be able to catch sometime on this channel. But that, that is the end of Lothar's dream. Super close. The Milan player even told us that he was months away from bankrupting. Just a couple things went different. Maybe Milan would have been the one that died and not us. But more importantly than this Lotharingia was truly from the bottom of my heart. I'm honestly so amazed and so proud of our community. We were able to raise a total over the course of my 21 hours of streaming. We raised a total of $2,000 for children. Truly, truly amazing. And I just also want to say that, you know, coming from where I came from, you know, two years ago, I had no following at all. Um, I just, you know, tried the YouTube thing and uh, made a couple of videos that, you know, some of you guys liked and just went with it from there. Um, and I'm honestly really appreciative for where I'm at. Um, I may not have a million subscribers or 100,000 subscribers or even 50,000 subscribers, but, you know, I do have 36,000 and most of you guys are really cool. And I hope you know that. Like the video if you liked it. Share it with your friends if you think they'll like it too. Honestly, I feel like someone who doesn't play EU4 could enjoy this content. Am I wrong? Am I right? Let me know down in the comments. There will be, unfortunately, no Twitch live streams for the next week and a half, but there will be YouTube content, so stay tuned. Love you guys. Take care. Be safe.